that's when I guess Vince McMahon uh, became kind of heel to Japanese audience, huh? Mm. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, he he abandoned uh, what they had going. Well, he had abandoned and what his Japanese had going. press, including including myself. Then at the time, we didn't realize that there was never Vince McMahon Jr. on WWF television. Even when he was an announcer, you know, doing the interviews and promos, mm -hmm. that the the writing, the tell up appears on the screen. Vince McMahon, right? Mm -hmm. Never had Junior on it. <laughs> but in Japanese press, press media, always referred him as Vince McMahon Junior because of his father. He was his, a big, big figure. His yeah. father was a, a known figurehead uh, and would be at a lot uh, not of shows. The, but the, the, uh, more than figurehead because he actually signed the deal. Sure, with, yeah. You know, Japanese wrestling at the original JWA, uh, Nippon Pro Wrestling, he sent Bruno San Martino or and other WWE superstar after their run in New York that they would, would be sent. You know, if you remember Bruno San Martino and Ray Stevens, big program in New York, right? Mm -hmm. Grudge program, 65, 66, 67, somewhere. That Ray Stevens and Bruno San Martino, after their feud in, you know, in, in WWF, they would travel to Japan together and tour together. And uh, not too many, you know, f American fans found out that uh, Bruno San Martino and Ray Stevens at the time they tagged team together in Japan. Yeah. It's like you could live a different, feeling? yeah, you could uh, yeah, do totally in a different, different things. universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But the, uh, at the time, you see, American superstar only come to one superstar come to only come to Japan maybe once or twice in lifetime, right? Sure. Not not until, special. Yeah, very special. Bruno San Martino altogether, probably in his thirty year career, only made seven tours to Japan altogether. He did come back to Japan as a commentator or he attended Jan Baba's memorial and all these things. But the San Martino era, they didn't really have regular, you know, appearance. Yeah, it was it, only it special was, occasions, big big matches. Yeah, therefore, see, in Japan, American superstar meant like Abdullah the Butcher, the Taiga Jit Singh, the, those were regular in superstar in Japan. Mm -hmm. Male maskers, of and course, Sheik. Story and Terry Funk, Sheik, yeah. And uh, of all people, like, in New Japan's, you know, the, the World League tournament final was Antonio Inoki against Killer Call Crap or somebody like that, you know. Mm. And then, then, Ma that uh, Vince McMahon Sr. comes in the ring and give big trophy to Anthony Inoki in 1974 and sign, you know, announced that uh, uh, New Japan and the WWF uh, signed the partnership. That's when, yeah, Under the Giants start showing up regularly because it was Vince McMahon Sr.'s idea that that they was, Under the Giant was always under Vince McMahon Sr.'s contract, you know, pretty much exclusively, but. Vince McMahon Sr. was so smart that uh, you don't want to keep Andre the Giant in one place that will wear out. You know, he has to be the, in like a special attraction. Therefore, under the younger Andre the Giant was more like a Vince McMahon Sr.'s ambassador that goes to every single territory, right? Mm -hmm. In America, Australia, Mexico, Canada, even Europe, that every time Andre the Giant make appearance, it's, it'll be like a mega show for any territory. You do the bat heavyweight, you know, super heavyweight battle royal or something, and uh, you know, work all over the place. And under the giant, starts spending ten to fifteen weeks a year, every year, between seventy four to eighty five. I mean, he was New Japan regular. Antonio Inoki against under heel under the giant. I don't remember. I don't know how many times that happened. You know, that was when Andre actually really wrestled though. I mean, like a serious-looking single match against Anthony Inoki. Andre had, People should go, he had yeah. great matches around that time with Inoki, with Stan Hansen, Hogan. Yeah, yeah. Well, the earlier Inoki, single match, single program. I mean, like a serious-looking single match. Like Inoki gives him um, short-arm scissors, key lock. Mm -hmm. And you know that Andre picks Inoki the whole body up, you know? And the uh, suplex and reverse suplex, you know, each other. I mean, Inoki and Andre, <laughs> I'm just suplexing each, each yeah. other, though. I mean, Andre yeah. was much more mobile. 
at the time. And actually a good athlete. You yeah. know, people don't know about it. Yeah. I think he was but, maybe uh, a little leaner or, or, or slimmer and able to and move more didn't have bad back. Yeah. 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 But um, even still. So that was like uh, uh, the part that the partnership between uh, Vince McMahon Sr. and Anthony Inoki in New Japan really worked. Yeah. Yeah. And all these superstars from WWE, one after another, they you know start showing up, you know, have a single match program against Antonio Inoki. Of course, Antonio Inoki beat every single one of those super WWE superstars, but uh, it was good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All the way to people like Jesse Ventura, Adrian, Adrian Adonis, Ken Patera, all these '80s superstars too. Yeah. So if we fast forward a few years from Vince McMahon Jr. taking over doing WrestleMania, so ultimately uh, splitting the relationship between WWF and New Japan. Yeah, and then also there was a thing, uh, I believe it was 1979, that uh, Antonio Inoki beat Bob Backlund in That's Tokushima right. to mm -hmm. become WWF champion. If it was, if it was Giant Baba and Harley Race, you know, Harley Race dropping NWA title to Baba, but the end of the tour about two weeks later, or even a week later, and one show that the Baba will drop the NWA title back to Harley Race, so he goes home with, as a champion. Came in as champion, dropped the title for a week, and get the title back, and go home. Like, nothing happened, right? Mm -hmm. 